Our, uh, our first guest in this uh, second hour of the program is uh, NRA lobbyist Art Tom, who joins us via telephone from an undisclosed location. Art, good morning. How are you, sir? <laughs> good morning. I'm at, I'm at my house in Charleston, West Virginia. That's right. You moved. Yeah. yeah how yeah, do you, about uh, full time in November. How do you like living in the uh, state capitol? You know, it's it's good. It's different. Uh, you know, I, I certainly uh, love the Eastern Panhandle. Uh, my mom and my sisters are still there. A lot of friends still there um, and uh, still actively a part of the uh, Eastern Panhandle. But uh, Charleston's nice. And, of course, my beautiful bride is here, so that helps out. Yeah, it doesn't hurt, right? It's always good to be around the wife. Unless, of course, you don't get along with the wife. <laughs> in which case, it's never going to be around the wife. <laughs> you're still a newlywed, though, Art, so I, I assume you're on good terms still, though. Yeah, it's so early. <laughs> uh, Actually, what? coming up uh, November 18th, just a few days shy of one year exactly. Hey, yeah, congratulations, Rob. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah, thank you. They, thank they you. say that first year is the toughest. Mm. Is that what they say? They, I, don't, I don't think they say that at all, <laughs> actually. <laughs> all right, let's talk uh, red flag laws. We got into a discussion on that last week, and uh, there were those who were making a case for them and those who were making a case against. And sometimes it'll surprise you which people are, are on each side of that, uh, by the way. For instance, Mike Carl, a uh, mm -hmm. conservative Republican, came out in favor of red flag laws. And some other people who you might look, think uh, on our Facebook uh, page w would be for those were against them. So this is an, it's, it's a fascinating issue to me. It is a fascinating issue. But, it, you know, and here's the thing is, is that, um, you know, Mike made an argument not just for red flag laws, but, you know, he wants, you know, a, a full pre-screening and, uh, you know, before even owning a firearm, which is ludicrous. And then he made the... The, uh, the argument that, well, you know, which we hear all the time, well, you know, we have all this training and all these requirements for driving a car. Yeah, well, Mike, I'm sorry that you don't uh, necessarily understand the Constitution, but driving is a privilege in the United States of America, not a constitutional right. And that's an important distinction, Art, which gets lost in the conversation as you get to higher levels uh, whenever you'll see national debates uh, by very high-profile people, they'll oftentimes bring out that driving thing, and driving is a privilege; mm -hmm. it's not a right. That's right. Uh, but uh, Art, is there some type of way we can deal with? I think we all agree we don't want the mentally unstable to be walking around with firearms. Uh, is there a is there a good way to address this problem? You know, here's the thing that keeps happening: is that, um, and we look at the circumstances in Tennessee, and they went through, and they they. They focused on the mental health issues, and um, and that's what we need to get to. But I'll tell you, and we talk about this a lot in the legislature, and I've talked about it across the country, as have my colleagues. Um, you know, everybody uh, on the Republican side, or most people on the Republican side, I, say, I guess I should say it, says, you know, Reagan was a great president, and um, – and for most parts, he was right. Uh, one of the things that I believe that uh, we're, you know, he messed up and overcorrected, like we, you know, often do, is in mental health. And you know, there was some really crazy things going on in, in the mental health arena back in those days. And uh, and the administration came in and said, you know what, we're going to put a stop to this. Uh, and unfortunately, they put a stop to it. And um, instead of you know correcting some of it. And making sure people weren't being electrocuted and, and, and all kinds of other uh, nutso stuff. They just shut a lot of these facilities down, uh, put these people on the street. Um, and, you, you know, as time has went on, there's been limited, more and more limited uh, funding to mental health care. Uh, there's ob absolutely no beds. You talk to any of the health care facilities, including the hospital in which uh, this gentleman had been institutionalized for two weeks. And in Maine, two weeks is the maximum uh, amount of time before you either have to go into involuntary commitment or they have to let you go. Well, the hospital uh, doesn't have the, uh, the resources, the beds, um, so they let you go. And uh, that's a problem. Um, but it's not sexy, right, talking about – uh, mental health issues, it doesn't get you elected. It doesn't get you reelected. Um, you have somebody that that uh, comes in and says, hey, look, we've got problems. Um, so we're going to potentially uh, put people 
in a, you know, in a home or a place where they just uh, they cannot be a harm to themselves or others. And, uh, you know, family members and, uh, and friends who aren't used to that because, you know, back in the 80s, or the, you know, we were more used to that. You were, oh, okay, yeah, they were, they were in a loony bin, as they said, um, which is, the, you know, obviously not the, the language you want to use for a place like that, but that's what was, that was what was said, and people were more used to it. Now you say we're going to have to send them away, and it is really bad. I don't want you to send my, my son away, my, my brother away, my friend away. Um, well, they, they probably should be. You know, and one of the things that always always triggers me, and uh, and I heard uh, uh, Bill, I heard your reaction, you know, to the text message, is that when somebody is saying to me, "This person is so dangerous to themselves or others, they're such a threat that we have to come and take anything, any inanimate object in this uh, certain circumstance, a firearm, but yet leave every other deadly instrument to their uh, disposal." But what we're not doing is addressing the problem, is, and that's the person that is the exact threat. You know, take that person for an immediate mental evaluation, and then it takes me, the gun lobby, and it takes, you know, Moms Against Everything, the anti-gun lobby, totally out of the equation, right? Now we don't have an argument in it because somebody that's a healthcare professional that is uh, trained and, and professionally certified – in this exact uh, health, uh, mode of healthcare, can determine is this person actually a threat to themselves or others, um, and and that's what I think should should happen. I think we should focus more on mental health. I think that you know until then the problem will not be solved. I think it's just continual continual band aids. Um, you know, you look at Maine and their yellow flag laws, which I I heard people say that that's not perfect, and of course the anti gun lobby. Uh, really didn't even like that they didn't think it went too they didn't think it went far enough and the only thing that the yellow flag versus the red flag is that a healthcare professional has to certify it before it can be given um you know it's just a, a little bit more of a due process you should not have your rights taken away before due process and that's exactly what a red flag law does what a red flag law does is says you are guilty now you have to come and prove your innocence you have to come hire an attorney you have to go to court, and you have to prove that you are sane enough to uh, exercise or even uh, have that constitutional right. Bill? Yeah. Uh, good morning, Art. Uh, and, and and you're raising what is a very complex issue that is not, uh, is not given to an easy solution. Uh, the constitutionality, uh, something I want to come back to in just a second. The other one is the alternative. Uh, and the alternative, uh, if we go strictly down the mental health uh, field uh, avenue, it's going to be extremely expensive, uh, and it's going to be resources that we currently do not have. Uh, will we, are the legislators, are the American people prepared to invest this amount of money for the mental health I think that's an open question. As far as the red flag laws, laws themselves, uh, I spent a, a few minutes this uh, this weekend doing some reading, knowing that you would be on, uh, that the bulk of the evidence of the success of red flag laws is in suicide more so than the mass shooting. And we're having we're on, on track to be the largest mass shooting of anywhere in the U.S. history. But red flag laws primarily are, or direct uh, or result in a uh, reduction in suicide. I think in one state, something like uh, uh, Indiana, something like uh, eight or nine percent reduction, and another state, uh, fourteen percent. Uh, not a major reduction, but it has some impact. Uh, the the issue that we hear most frequently is constitutionality, and it's all over the place. New York uh, Supreme Court rejected the red flag laws because. It was not a yellow flag law, that they did not have the doctors or psychiatrists involved in the early process. Uh, Florida, on the other hand, has ruled that it is constitutional. 
Uh, we're going to find out, I think, this year. Uh, tomorrow, if memory serves, the Supreme Court will be looking at the constitutionality of the red flag laws. And I think that's going to drive our discussion uh, down uh, in, in future weeks and future months with what the Supreme Court actually says. Do you have any sense at all the what the Supreme Court questions they'll be asking? Um, I, I don't. I don't right now. Um, you know, our legal team, I'm sure, is is all to, uh, you know is all over that. But uh, but I'm not. And you know, Bill, you you bring up some good points, and it's exactly kind of the, what I was I was leading to uh, earlier or discussing. You know, you talk about the expense of uh, of correcting our mental health uh, issues and the the lack of resources, which you know it's because of the you know largely because of the expense. Um, of, of them, and uh, and are the legislature are the legislatures across the country, or are you know Congress willing to uh, to make hard decisions um, to address those problems? And and that's the thing, you know, they talk about again. Well, I'm just going to get a gun out of their hands. Well, but but you're likely not. You know, I mean, either either way, like this gentleman had had firearms for for years and years, um, and others, you know, can can obtain them illegally illegally if if they like. You know, I think again, as you pointed out, um, we have to make a decision. We that that this is important. That this is, you know, going to be the cure. If we're looking for a cure, something that's really going to matter. You know, you talk about the impact and how it's it's uh, negligible. Um, when it comes down to uh, to the red flags, even on suicides, wouldn't taking that person for a mental evaluation and realizing that they're uh, not mentally competent to be able to uh, uh, handle themselves, really, wouldn't that be more effective in the long run of keeping them alive or keeping them from, from harming themselves or others? Um, I believe so. I'm I'm a big supporter of red flag laws, uh, but admittedly I'm not in a position to make a decision. But what bothers me about the red flag laws is that there is insufficient data uh, to make a rational or meaningful decision, and uh, especially insufficient data when it comes to mass shootings uh, and probably suicide as well. So right now we're um, an emotional argument on both sides of the fence, but without the ability to do an analytical argument. Yeah, no, and, and Bill, you make a good point, and uh, and that's where typically the folks that that I'm discussing this with are very similar to you, uh, a very big fan of the idea of red flag laws, but um, in at the end of the day, uh, cannot articulate uh, with factual data why. Exactly. Yep. The cert- you're right, and the thing is, is that. At the end of the day, what I keep hearing, and uh, I'm sure you've heard or maybe have said, we we have to do something. And it's like, right, but if we do something that that doesn't have any impact, wouldn't have had, had any impact, and that's what are the questions I ask. They say, okay, we have to do something. Okay, fine. What would your solution have done to prevent this previous uh, massacre from happening? Well, it, it – it, it, it maybe wouldn't have. Well, then why do you want to do that? You know, it's. I was a businessman for a long, long time before I was a, uh, a lobbyist, and I can tell you, if I, if a customer came up to me and was like, "Okay, so I have this problem," and I said, "All right, well, uh, here's the here's what I have for you," and they go, "Well, how how in the world is that going to solve my problem?" Well, I don't know, but it's a it's a solution. It may not be your solution, but it's a solution. They'd say. Get out of my office. You're, I'm not hiring you for that job, you, you know, or I'm going to fire you if I had you. Um, you can't just do something. You have to look at what's going to have a, an immediate impact or a long-term impact, for that matter, of the problem at hand and, and go that route or at least attempt to go that route. And I'm, I've said it so many times. These people are, are mentally ill, right? I, nobody kills somebody. There's no – nobody can make an argument that you didn't kill somebody – um, outside of self-defense, without having a mental issue, that includes yourself. Let's focus on that. 
you know, I, I, this is John. I, I think there's a tendency in these conversations, <clears throat> excuse me, to focus on on the great big shootings, you know, the, the ones that are headline stealers. And for whatever reason, we ignore Chicago every weekend where, you know, dozens, if not hundreds of people are shot down in gang violence or what Absolutely. have you that goes largely un. Uh, prosecuted, or if mm -hmm. if charges are made, then there, there's no bailment for the for the uh, for the perpetrators. So there are a lot of things that are broken in this system, and the solution is actually codified within the Constitution. The solution is to to amend the Constitution that will no longer make it a natural right for people to be able to protect themselves. What the Second Amendment says does not give anybody the right to to bear arms. What it does is it protects the natural right to bear arms from interference from the government. So every every red flag law, which brings with it the law of unintended consequences, which means, you know, a girlfriend is mad at her boyfriend. So she says, hey, you got to take all of his guns. And and now that has to go through the judicial process. Those are the objections to the red flag laws, because we on the one hand, we've got a natural right that is to be denied. And then it puts the burden of proof on the one who is denied to prove that he or she should not have that right d denied. So the, there's a speciousness to the whole argument of red flag laws as I see them. Am I looking at it at, in the wrong way? I, I actually want to offer you a job right now. <laughs> I have one. Thank you. <laughs> it pays pretty good. <laughs> You uh, no, you you make my exact argument. I, I I couldn't disagree with you if I, you know, if I was playing devil's advocate. Um, the uh, you're 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 absolutely right, and that is that is the problem. And you bring up really good points that a lot of people just want to ignore. Again, um, and uh, we we do get focused on the uh, the mass shootings and the. Uh, the major massacres that hit the news media, but you're right. One, the news media doesn't uh, focus on places like Chicago um, or L.A. or or other places in where there's significant crime, significant firearm-related crime, and these are um, the ma vast majority, 90s illegally owned and possessed firearms. Um, and, you know, when we come down to that type of stuff, you look at um, – why does that happen? And that's a whole different thing. You know, you're looking at these urban metropolitan areas with 250,000 or greater where there's, you know, high drug crime, high gang crime, high unemployment, uh, high poverty, low education, uh, instances of, of split homes and fatherless homes and things of that nature that, look, if we were to, uh, if we were to address our social issues, again, not popular among politicians and or the political media, but if we were to uh, address those, those social problems that we have, Crime in general would, would uh, drop significantly, firearm-related crime uh, not to be excluded. Art, the, uh, po your point's taken, and I cannot disagree with that. However, we can hide behind that particular bush, the social bush or cultural bush, and do absolutely nothing about anything. Come out of the Constitution. Yeah, I don't think— what is yeah. it, what is, Bill, what is your what is your solution? My my solution is that I think we have to work on those things that we can work on. Those things that we have some potential of rectifying. Uh, changing our cultural is an easy argument to make. It's practically impossible to to implement. Uh, but we can carve out those particular issues that that would make a difference. It would not solve the whole problem, admittedly, but it would solve a a problem and I think that's what we should do okay what what is that well again I'm coming back to the red flag laws that does not answer all the questions it does have what? certain certain uh, benefits at least in the uh, 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 in the suicide those data has has indicated that mass shooting we do not have the data uh, but it's going to come down very quickly this coming week with what the Supreme Court decides constitutionality. This may be a mute point in uh, uh, four months' time, Rob. If they say it's unconstitutional, uh, then the Supreme Court has spoken. I don't know how they're going to uh, take. Go ahead, John. A, a related point in another Supreme Court case is coming up. I just read this this morning. Um, the Supreme Court is going to be taking up the legality or taking up the prohibition of bump stocks. Now, bump stocks are... 
um, devices that can be added to firearms that make essentially simulate the effect of an automatic weapon where you it's it it's one trigger pull gets you a lot of bullets it's, it's what the guy used in uh, Las Vegas in the um, Mandalay Bay shootings now as I understand it the Supreme Court case is not going to be looking it's not really a gun case but it's an appurtenance case you know whether or not the uh, an agency of an unelected agency of the federal government can name a thing that is not a gun a gun and therefore regulate it can tell talk about that a little bit and where the nra stands on that yeah so um we don't support the ban of of uh you know any any firearm or for firearm related accessory um you know i, I think that uh you know if if you're otherwise lawful to possess a firearm. You should be able to possess a firearm. It is, you know, it, it's uh, that's just where where I stand, and, and most typically the NRA stands. Um, when it comes to this specific case, um, you're right. It's not a. Uh, they're looking more to the uh, the issue of can the ATF ban that? We we believe no. You know, we don't. That's these are uh, whether they're they're banning bump stocks, whether they're banning, uh, you know. Uh, the uh, arm braces, you know, the the forward, uh, you know, the forward grip, whatever it is that that the uh, the ATF is is attempting to ban through rule, um, they we believe they should not be able to do that. That's for Congress to make the decisions. They make the laws, not the bureaucracy of an administration. And and the problem being is is that um, right now we have what could be millions of otherwise law-abiding folks. That you know, through a through a ban of this item, uh, or you know, the uh, also the uh, the arm brace, for that matter, could become felons. You know, and they're otherwise law-abiding, and because of a a piece of plastic that is absolutely not a firearm, and because some agency says that now that is illegal, you could become a felon, and, and a big one. Not you know, this twenty years in jail. In, you know, massive fines fell um, All at the same time, in what could be two years, another administration come back and completely flips that on its head. You know, that, that just should not uh, be able to happen that way. And, um, you know, for that reason alone, it is intensely dangerous to allow a bureaucracy to make rules um, that are law. Should somebody be allowed, we, we stipulate right now that fully automatic weapons, machine guns, are, are not legal in the United States. And that's a different argument whether they should be, but they're not. Um, so should somebody be able to take their, um, their AR-15, their Bushmaster, and smith it a little bit, change the sear, and turn that into a fully automatic weapon? Should that be legal? Uh, that's an NFA. Uh, you know, that would take that into an NFA-controlled uh, uh, device, which would uh, be covered under that law and as you stated um illegal without a uh, class three license so how is that fundamentally different than a bump stock well because a bump stock is not changing anything it's not you know uh you know adjusting a sear or you know drilling any parts of the uh, the lower or, or any of that matter it's simply utilizing its own recoil um to to fire it it's still one trigger pull one cartridge fired it's there is you know as far as the functionality of the firearm it's still the same just like if you were to stick your hand in your belt loop you know and uh and use the recoil that way it, it does the exact same thing until uh you know depending on what kind of jeans you are you rip your belt loop but the uh and unfortunately the accuracy i think is about the same of, of both uh you know if you do that or if you use a bump stock, but, um, you know, are they, are they a fun little thing? Yep. Um, are they, uh, terribly useful? Not to me, but you know, some folks, uh, really like them, uh, you know, for, uh, for whatever purposes that they, uh, they decide to, uh, to visit, possess them. But, uh, again, it does not change the functionality of that firearm whatsoever. John's offended you referred to his midsection. <laughs> My belt loops are strained enough as they are. Thank you very much. <laughs> Art, how do people uh, people find out more about the NRA, sir? So uh, you could go to uh, you know our website, um, 
nra.org. You can go to um, my side of the world, nraila.org. And certainly next year when we're dealing with uh, the elections, you can go to nratvf.org to find out everything about your candidate and where they stand on firearms rights. Good to talk with you. Thank you, Art. Thanks, Art. Always great to talk to you all. Thank you.